Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printing here. In today's video, I'll be talking about what cross-site request forgery is, how it works, and how you can prevent it. So I have a simple flask app built here that will demonstrate all this. It's not really important uh, what the code is. I'll just show you the result of the code. And I have two template files that you'll see in just a moment. So if I start up my application, and then go to my index, I see three links here. So the first link is update email, which is a protected route that only works if I'm logged in. The second link is a login that actually logs me in to user ID one. So now that I click update email, I can actually see it and then log out logs me out. So when I go to update email again, I can't see it. So when I update email, first let me log in again, when I update my email, it will update an email in the database. So let me show you my database. So SQLite 3 cross site request forgery.db select star from user. So I have two rows in my database and each row has two columns. The first is an ID column and the second is an email address. So as you can imagine, when I submit an email into this form, it will update the email address. And in this particular case, I'll be updating user number one. So I'll start the app and I'll update the email address. So right now the email address is testemail at email.com and I'll put new email at email.com as the new email address. And then when I view the database again, I see new email at email.com is the new email for row number one. And the other row is unaffected because that is not my user. So that is just a setup for the demonstration of how cross-site request forgery works. So what I'll do is I'll start up the app and I'll go to update email. And I wanna take a look at some things that are going on. First, when I open this, I have a cookie here. So what cookies are, are just basically information stored by your browser. And the special thing about cookies is that whenever you send a request to the domain that created the cookie, the cookie will automatically get sent. So it's very common for typical sites to have multiple cookies. So every time you submit a, qu a request to the site, it sends all those cookies with that request. So for instance, Facebook, let's say there are three cookies associated with Facebook. Every time you navigate to another page on Facebook or submit some form on Facebook, it will send the cookies automatically so Facebook can read those cookies and know who you are and know other information about you. Also, when I submit this form, so email at email.com. It submits a post request to this update email and it can give me the URL. So it's my local machine port 5000 slash update email. So to abuse this, what I'll do is I'll copy the form and I'm going to create a new HTML file that will be outside of my app. So I'll call this hack.html and I'll need to modify it a little bit to get it to work. First thing I want to do is I want to change the action. So right now it's update email, but it's assuming that this form will be on the same server as the rest of the app, which is normally the case. But since I'm an attacker, that won't be the case. So instead the URL is going to be this up here. So the action will be this. And I can call that using HTML. I can send a post request to any URL that I want, regardless if it's on my server or not. So if I change this to something like Facebook, I can send a post request to them. They probably won't accept it, but I can at least try. Next thing I'll do is I'll add a name here and I'll call this my form and I'll add a value hacked email at, or just hacked at email.com. And what I want this to do is to submit the form automatically. So on load, I'm going to call document.myform.submit. So once this page loads, it will automatically submit a request to this URL here. 
So to demonstrate this, let me make sure my app is running. And this will only work if I'm logged in because I will then have the cookies. If I'm not logged in, then I won't have the cookies. So the attacker is trying to guess that you would be logged into a certain site that they want to manipulate on your behalf without you knowing. So if I wasn't logged into my site, then I wouldn't be able to do this cross-site request forgery. But if I am logged in, then I can do it. So I'll show you both cases. First, let me log out. So I'll log out here so I can no longer access the update email. So if I open up my hack.html, just going to drag it here, it tells me unauthorized. So that hack.html was just a simple HTML file. It's not connected to any app. It tried to submit that post request, but it couldn't because I'm not logged in. So now let me go back to my app and log in. And then let me try to submit that hack. And it just refreshes. So just imagine that hack.html came from some other site and it was submitting the form to my original server. So if I close this out and go to my database, so csrf.db and select star from user, I now see hack.email.com is the new email address for user number one, even though I never actually submitted that form myself with that email address. And that's because I was able to perform a cross-site request forgery. So how to prevent this? Well, just so you know, one of the ways this would be done is the hacker would try to trick someone into clicking a link that would then submit a form to a site that they're pretty sure that the user would be logged into. So that's how this works. If they're not logged in, it wouldn't work. And if they can't click the link for whatever reason, then it wouldn't work. So now to prevent attacks like this, you can use a cross-site request forgery token. And the form manager that I'm using here creates them automatically. So I'll set this to true. So it was disabled before. And in my form, what I'll do is I'll just add the token. So form.csrf token. And now when I start the app again, the form is going to look a little different. So if I go to update email and take a look at the page source, I see this CSRF token input and it has this long value here. So now if I copy this, and paste it and then do those same actions where I, you know, change the action. I change the name to be my form and I, another hacked at email.com and I'll have the on load here. So on, load I'm going to say document dot my form dot submit okay so I should be logged in right now I am so now what I want to do is I'll move this hack over so I can load it and it returns but it doesn't give me any message and because I have that cross-site request forgery token activated I shouldn't have been able to update the database. So let me look at the database again. So CSRF. And remember that the last email was another hack.email.com. So select star from user. And we see another hacked is there. So it still worked. So what's the problem? Well, the problem is I was able to use the exact CSRF token that was generated for the user. So from the server's perspective, it doesn't know the difference. But in a uh, attacker would not be able to get that CSRF token. It would be impossible for them to do it because you would go to a site, let's say Facebook, inside of the HTML would be a CSRF token for you. And then when you go to the attacker site, they will have no way of knowing what that token is. So if I were to change this to be anything else, I can just remove just a few characters and then try it again. So final hack at email.com save that. Now what I'll do is I'll start up the app again. 
I'll go here. Update email has some CSRF token, but my hack doesn't have the right CSRF token because it's impossible for me to know what that is. So I'll move this over and I get the form back. It doesn't give me any error messages because I don't have any error messages in my HTML, but if everything goes as expected, I should not see final hack at email.com in the database. So I'll look at my database one last time. Select star from user and it's still on another hacked at email.com. So I didn't update to final hack because this time the CSRF token did not match and an attacker would not have access to the actual CSRF token. If they did have access to that, then that means they have access to your computer and you have a different problem. But in a sense of a typical cross-site request forgery attack, they would not be able to do that. So I hope you understand a little more about cross-site request forgery. Just know that to prevent it, you would create a cross-site request forgery token. In my particular case, I have an extension that does it for me automatically. If you don't have an extension, then what you'll have to do is you'll have to create some unique value automatically and be able to check that whenever a form gets submitted. So you wanna make sure that the value that you generate for the form matches the value that comes back with the form when they perform a request but I highly recommend looking for some kind of library that can handle this for you so you don't have to write extra code for that because when, you, when it comes to writing security code, you don't want to have any mistakes. So it's better to use a tested library than it is to use your own code in most cases. So if you have any questions about cross-site request forgery, you can just leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. Thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.